Hi, my name is Sarah Perry. I'm an entertainment and advertising lawyer at Heenan Blakey. I'm going to talk to you about understanding the legal and regulatory landscape in Canada in creating branded content. As we all know, with the changing media landscape, near universal access to information, and consumer control over the content that they receive, it is essential that brands find new and meaningful ways to reach out and engage consumers. And one of the ways that they're doing this is through branded entertainment. Branded content, or advertainment, is when a brand engages in creating entertainment-based projects that is complementary to its marketing strategy. This can include a brand-funded or heavily integrated television show. These projects are often the result of a partnership between advertisers, producers, and media publishers, and they come with legal and regulatory hurdles. We've identified six key legal and regulatory issues that brands should be aware of before they engage in branded content. The first issue that's essential to know is to identify what is advertising and what is entertainment. Once something is deemed to be advertising, there are some strict legal and regulatory regimes that apply. For example, an advertisement cannot be found to be false or misleading. and implied or direct claims about a product must be substantiated with adequate and proper testing. There are significant penalties for failure to comply, including monetary penalties up to $10 million. The second issue is if you're going to create a branded content television show in Canada, you need to be aware of the significant regulatory restrictions against advertising. For example, in order for a producer to take advantage of federal and provincial tax credits, it cannot be deemed an advertisement. The governments will exercise a significant amount of discretion over determining when something is an advertisement and when something is entertainment. Some of the factors that they'll look at will include how much funding the brand has put in to create the show, how much control the brand has over the content and direction of the show, and how much advertising is integrated into the show itself and outside of the show. In addition, if it's deemed to be a commercial, it's not going to get a CRTCC number, which basically makes the show eligible as Canadian content. Broadcasters have a quota on the number of shows that they must air that are Canadian content, and if you don't get this number, you're unlikely to get picked up. In order to determine if you're eligible for Canadian content, CRTC will determine the same factors as above that CAVCO considers when determining whether production tax credits are eligible. The third issue to consider is whether your branded content program is going to engage the hiring of professional talent. If so, you're going to need to figure out if it's subject to a union agreement. So when you're creating traditional advertising, it's the Actron National Commercials contract that would apply. Whereas if you're creating traditional entertainment vehicles, it's going to be the ACTRA Independent Production Agreement that applies. They both have different wage requirements, work rules, and pension and health payment systems that will apply, so you really need to figure out which one is going to govern your project. If you pick it up under the National Commercials Contract, you're somewhat admitting that it's advertising, in which case you need to consider it in relation to how your project is going to be viewed by other regulators like CAVCO and the CRTC. The next issue we have to consider is when creating branded content, there's often a tug of war between brands and producers over the control of the content. Brands want to have ultimate and complete control over the content. They want to make sure that the products that are shown in the show are used in the way that they're intended, there's no disparagement, they're not used in a negative manner, and they also want to make sure that there's no competitive products being used in the show. Whereas producers are really trying to tell a story. They're creating entertainment and they want any integration to be authentic and to not rub viewers the wrong way. If a viewer sees a show as ultimately just one big commercial, they're not going to tune in. So at the end of the day, it's a really delicate balance that needs to be walked. Brands have to relinquish some of the control that they have over traditional media and producers have to be aware of the limitations and the directions of the brand so that they're meeting what the brand's obligations are and that the program at the end of the day aligns with the brand values. With creative content, there's often a struggle over rights ownership. So traditionally speaking, when a brand creates advertising, they own 100% of the distribution rights. They engage creative on a work-for-hire basis, meaning they own all of that content. However, when a brand engages with a producer to create branded content, sometimes because of regulatory concerns, either the producer or the broadcast distributor is going to be required to own 100% of that content. A brand in that case will have to negotiate for the ability to use that content in its future marketing campaigns. So because of all of these issues, we think it's really important that brands have a production agreement in place with the producers and the media publishers before they engage in any branded content program. This will help set forth in writing who has control over the content, who owns the content, who gets the rights to distribute that content, and it will really just help make sure all parties are on the same page, that there are no surprises, and that everyone is measuring success by the same parameters. So because of the unique legal and regulatory issues that face branded content, we always recommend that advertisers meet early and often with producers, the media distributors, and their legal counsel to make sure that any proposed branded content program is on-site and in compliance with all applicable laws and regulations.